Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am back in the same day. This has never happened before. But I wanted to talk more about what I just talked about in this morning's video about morning and evening rituals or programs or practices. Just that time on the bookends that Sarah talked about for us. Because after I uploaded the video, I started to think about how I didn't really share some of the things that I wanted to share about my own personal practices. Partly when I'm outside, I'm just overly self-conscious about all of a sudden a neighbor coming out or something. And so that was a part of it. And I don't like to re-record, you know, as I've said to you before. And then I was just gonna go outside again and do this video on the patio, but my neighbors have their air conditioning unit on now and it's really loud. So it's not as peaceful as it was earlier. So anyway, back to the same sort of discussion, cause I was thinking, I was just over analyzing how I brought in some of the things that were more like task oriented to especially the morning routine because that's really not why Sarah was talking to us about that. And actually, if you're just joining me, I'm talking about Sarah Von Bronick. We are following along in her book, Simple Abundance. This channel is dedicated to the principles in it and it's a day book that we're reading from each day and most of my videos are related directly to her entries. So when she was talking to us about having something that we do in the morning and the evening, she was talking about it being that quietude time, right? So I sort of had a spin on it as far as like getting up and starting the day off and like having your tasks in mind and all that. Now that goes hand in hand with the order. So it wasn't completely off base, but I wanted to tell you guys more about my own morning and my evenings too, which are probably more in line with the quietude that Sarah was talking about. So one thing I wanna share in the morning, I do have quite a morning routine. Like, first of all, I won't schedule anything until after 10 o'clock because I have to wake up. Like I am not a morning person, probably never have been. I'm more of an evening, afternoon, late night person. Uh, the morning takes me a bit. Like I remember years ago, and I mentioned my marriage a lot, but it's just because it was a big part of my life. But when I was married, we were opposites in the way that we needed to wake up. First of all, I used to be somebody who, when the alarm went off, I would immediately get up out of bed. That's different now but I'm also not somebody who wants to press snooze for an hour either. And that was what I was married to and that, that used to bug the crap out of me. Um, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. But now I'm actually somewhere in between because I only have one snooze, but it's a part of my morning ritual. So first of all, I don't have an alarm that is really loud. Like, you know, if you all of a sudden have like the radio blasts on or like something really jolting, I don't like that at all. So I actually, I'll play you the beginning of, of a song. I love Broadway. So this is a Broadway song from the Fantastics. And I'll just, I'm just gonna play the beginning so you can hear how quiet it sounds and how it just gradually wakes me up. Oops, it didn't go to the beginning. What happened? So you can barely hear it. And then he starts singing. And it, it's probably a three minute song. So it's very much like easing me into getting awake. And then I have that alarm set in the morning and then I know that I have another 30 minutes before I really need to be getting out of bed. So what do I do in those 30 minutes? I have told you guys before briefly, but and I'll put 
the information about this in the box below. I do Louise Hayes morning meditation. And this is a CD. I know a lot of people don't have those anymore. I actually do have it recorded on my same iPod that I have my alarms on. So I can just press the button. Honestly, sometimes I will doze off a little bit, but I'm sure subconsciously I can hear it all. Um, but there's something to me very comforting in knowing that I have the half an hour. I used to actually get up brush my teeth, do some stuff, and then go back into the bed. And I feel like Sarah hasn't really told us about that. Maybe that's gonna be later in the book. Cause that was her practice too. She used to like to just get back in bed and you know, get ready for the day. It's harder for me now because of the setup that I have. You guys know I don't let my cat Annabelle into my bedroom. So I'm not as apt to uh, do as much in there as in other places that I lived and before when my cats used to just be able to come in and out of my bedroom, I was more apt to have an evening routine in my bedroom more than I do now. But so I do the the meditation, the Louise Hay meditations, about 26, 27 minutes, which is perfect. And then my next alarm, the one where I have to get up, you guys will know this. And both of those I just got off of um, iTunes, yeah, so. So this is more like, can't help but like, just dance along, right? <laughs> you know I love Mr. Rogers. Um, so, and that one's even like another two and a half minutes, so. But it just, it rouses me. I've already, even if I fell asleep a little bit through the meditation, I'm waking up and then that's like a really nice sentiment. You know, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's just, it's just a nice song to wake up to. So I'm wondering what, how you guys wake up. You know, do you have some kind of a song that you really love or is it some sort of like really jolting thing that gets you up? Because you do want to have it be nice and calm and waking up to something slowly like they even have I think sounds like birds singing I wonder if I would sleep through that I think the song definitely I always wake up I mean I've never ever slept through it and then plus with the function on the iPad or iPod I mean uh, if you if for if for some reason I did sleep through it it will play again so it's like it's inevitable that I will wake up. I'm not that heavy of a sleeper that I wouldn't wake up by the end of the song. Um, so then when I get up, I pretty much have a routine of like, well, I do take some medicine right when I wake up in the morning. So it's like medicine, say hello to Annabelle, go brush my teeth, you know, get a little bit settled. And then, um, yeah, I don't always eat breakfast right away, but I will, uh, unlike that guy uh, that I forget the person who said don't check the email first thing I do check the email just to see what might be there I sit down with my planner kind of map out what I'm gonna do I know I'm I'm in a different situation than some of you maybe because I do work for myself and I work from home so um, and I don't have kids so I'm not trying to like juggle all these things but I need my sort of like slow waking up like sip some tea and maybe tune into a YouTube video or something inspirational to just get my day going. So I know there have been some times that I've had to be places really early in the morning. In fact, in February, I had to be somewhere about an hour away and with the snow and everything, I stayed in a hotel the night before because I didn't, I wanted to be able to sleep longer and then not be worried about the weather and stuff. So I just, I just have like a slow waking up sort of thing. The other thing I was gonna say about my marriage was in the morning, I don't really like loud noises either. And, and I also don't like the news, like I've told you guys, although I've been watching so much more news this year just because I feel the need to stay informed of what's going on with COVID-19. But uh, 
we would just be, there would be like talk radio on so loud in the car, like, cause we used to commute together. And it was just not my preferred morning. Like I would have preferred to have like Enya on and just be sipping something and just like, I, I just, if I could sleep till 11 every day, I'd probably be, <laughs> probably be happy with that. But, but, and the most comfortable getting up around nine. Like if that's like the time that I'm stepping out of bed, that's, I'm usually well rested at that point. Um, share in the comments below for what, for what you may do in the morning or what your preferences are um, as far as loudness, quietness. Maybe you're a morning person. I know some people are just like up and at them and they're like the most productive all day if they do it, their things in the morning. And then, so in the evening time, back when I said I used to be able to do more in my bedroom, that's when I would put the essential oils on. I'd get, I used to have a CD player right by my bed. This is before, like now I could just have it all on my iPod, but uh, I'd have put CD on. I would write in my journal. Sometimes I'd have my planner in there, uh, read. I didn't have any kind of TV or anything in the bedroom, but you know, that was how I would do it back then. Now, because if I go into the bedroom for a length of time, and I'm not sleeping with the light on, then you guys have been witness to the fact that Annabelle will just cry and cry and cry outside the door. She needs her snuggle time. So a lot of times in the evening, I'm on the couch. And so same sort of thing. I'm usually winding down with my journal. I've got the next day planned out in my planner. Um, I definitely don't, I, re, I don't even have television reception. I, I have an antenna that I can like get like two stations on. Uh, but I, so I have some apps like Hulu and Netflix and things, but I'm not really addicted to any shows. Uh, so for me, I don't have like a schedule. I actually, when I say I'm not addicted, I, I love This Is Us. I have to watch This Is Us. And sometimes I tune into a million little things also. And I love The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, you guys know that. But these shows are not on all the time. So like right now there's no TV shows and like I don't really binge watch seasons or anything on Netflix. So maybe once a week I might watch a movie, uh, but more often than not I have relaxing music like Pandora or some kind of, there's so many YouTube channels that you can put on that just have beautiful scenery and then they're playing like really relaxing music so that's my thing just having something relaxing on in the background and uh, I like to have the essential oils going sometimes I'll light candles like I actually um, like I, I'm not into like the Yankee candle scented stuff but you guys saw that I have like white candles and right now on my countertop here I have two little votive candles and last night I had them lit with my flowers set up on the counter and uh, just some light, um, soft lighting. So it's definitely lulling me into a more relaxed time. But like I said, I am actually probably more energetic at night. So half the time I don't want to go to bed. Isn't that funny? It's like in the morning, I don't really want to get up. But then at night, I don't, I have to tell myself like, you have to go to bed, it's going on 1.30 or whatever, you know? No, but typically like 12, 12.30, it's like my average time for at least making sure I'm getting in bed. And I haven't been great I, lately, especially I've been, I since I bring my iPod in and then I have the device that I'm filming on right now, like sometimes I'm like last minute, like looking something up that, and I shouldn't do that because not only with the feng shui and not having electronics in the bedroom i was reading something about blue light and it's like they were saying you would not go out in the direct sunlight and be like looking up at the sun like right before you were going to go to bed you know it's just it's like giving you these jolts of light so it's not letting your brain do that shutdown like we talked about in my other video so my evenings are fairly quiet. I have a couple of social things when life is normal that I do on a weekly basis. Right now it's been, what? Me and Annabelle. <laughs> and uh, occasionally some Zoom calls or FaceTiming with friends. Uh, 
but nighttime's my quiet reflecting time and you guys know I love my journals and thinking about stuff. I have a kitty that wants to be talking to us. And uh, one thing I read too when I was reading about uh, the evening time and making it, this is not necessarily a quietude thing, but as far as like evening time, this was an interesting thought as far as making your evenings like a weekend. So the question was, you know, why do we love the weekend so much? And it's because we do extra things with friends and we actually make plans and stuff. So it was saying like you can make your evenings like your sort of like your weekend plans. I wonder maybe your life isn't conducive to that, but I thought that was a neat thought. Like, and that's if you're wanting to bring some more joy and excitement into your life. And that might be like later when restrictions are lifted a bit more for, for us to have a normal life, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. So let me know what you guys do for your morning and evening routines. If you haven't already, you may have already commented on my other video, but I just wanted to come back and revisit this a little bit more personally. I, like I said, I got a little bit thrown off earlier because I was thought I heard my neighbor and I was like, oh, I better stop talking. And, and then I hadn't brought the CD out to remind me to mention that. I hope this is giving you guys some thoughts of ways that you can add those bookends, like Sarah called them, to give, give yourself, she said, even 10 minutes. Like she knows, she even said in the entry, um, she said something like, I know I've already probably overwhelmed you with all this time that you're trying to find, but you know, five, 10 minutes, like even if you have like a little um, affirmation deck like I shared with you guys, or you, someone said in the comments that she recorded them, like listening to those in the morning, like think about the ways that you're beginning and ending your day. There actually is this evening meditation from Louise, but I can't say I do that one often because what was happening was I would fall asleep during it and then I forgot to turn my device off and then my, <laughs> then my battery would die and everything. And usually I'm pretty, like by the time I get into bed because I finally wait till I'm like really tired, then, um, yes, hi. Um, then I don't really have trouble falling asleep mostly unless there's some sort of like major stress or emotional thing happening with me and then then I may have trouble falling asleep but but I have coping mechanisms for falling asleep <laughs> that could be a whole other conversation as far as um, like I don't know if you count sheep or I, I'm able to visualize a lot of things in my mind so sometimes I will picture that I'm driving somewhere and I will picture from the moment of like getting in my car and taking the turns and and half the time I don't even before I fall asleep get to the place because like it's almost like a falling asleep I mean a, a counting sheep sort of thing and this is gonna sound so bizarre but this totally always puts me to sleep even though it's a fun thought but I mentioned to you guys um, my first home that I had, I lived there by myself. This is before I met my ex-husband. And I mentioned I had it all decorated like in this cute little way. But if I could have had my way, I would have like definitely uh, knocked down some walls and made an addition on it and everything. So even though this is like, I bought that house in 2001, I think. Yeah, 2001. And even though so many years later, I can go to my mind to that house and I will like, um, you know, I'll like redecorate it and add on rooms and, you know, build, build out and up and everything. And <laughs> I know that sounds totally crazy, but it sometimes, it just somehow like really soothes me and, and then I fall asleep. And so I am sure there's other things that are not coming to my mind right now, but I typically don't have a tough time falling asleep. And where did I, how did I get on that tangent? I don't even remember what that was related to now. Oh, it's just probably like why I don't really do the evening meditations. But I think if you can give yourself this extra time to think about, like I was saying, how are you starting your day and how are you ending your day? And not ending the day 
with watching the news and like don't bring those things to bed with you and just like I mentioned in the other video about not being in a fight with your significant other or having you know really difficult conversations right before bed like that's not a great idea so try to think about what you can do to make your morning routine of waking up and those first you know that first hour or so of being conscious like how that can be enriching and same thing on the other end um, the way that you can sort of soothe yourself to sleep and even in the last hour or two before bed how you can bring in things like maybe it's the scents or music or something like that that's just gonna really like calm you down and get you into that shutdown phase Hope you like it. Thanks for being here and I think I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I will be. It's the 29th because there's another entry to share with you guys. Lots of fun every day. And then June is coming up soon. So we will be getting into a whole brand new month and summer's coming. I hope you're working on your summer bucket list. I made my list in my journal. I haven't done my creative version of it yet for my bucket, but I did make my list the other night. I think it's going to be a fun, fun summer. Love to you all and talk to you guys next time.